New York City for the last time this season. Let's do that hockey. It's Kazim Fahmui Day here, host of MSG PM, joined by the wonderfully talented, fresh from Vegas, oh, yeah. Madeline Burke. Uh, first off, incredible travel that you must have pulled off to get from here to Vegas and back. Shout out to airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of appreciation for the airline industry. They get you from A to B. There you go. <laughs> incredible. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of that later, but tonight... Incredible show, jam-packed. We got so much to talk about, not just Rangers hockey in the first round. We got special guest Quincy Anunua to come here and talk about the Jets, talk about the NFL draft. We're going to talk about the Giants as well. We got some NBA playoffs to jump into, but the aforementioned New York Rangers end the season on a high note, their 52nd win of the year. Why is the 52 number so important? That is the last number of wins they had when they won the Stanley Cup in 1994. Incredible game for the Rangers. Incredible tonight. game. And the second most wins in franchise history. Franchise history. history. 52. 52 is a good number. The Rangers locking in, locking in that two seed, which I think a lot of Rangers fans were kind of hoping for, right? As much as, yeah, you want to win the Metro, getting that two seed, getting that matchup with the Pittsburgh Penguins, playing the way that this team is playing. I think that matchup looks good for this team. I think everyone we've talked to uh, thinks that that matchup looks good for this team. That's the one you want to see if you're a Rangers fan. Uh, this is a good time of year to be kind of going into the playoffs. It's a good, good time. It's a good time to be a Rangers fan right now. You know, they, they're 3-1 and against the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I think it all comes down to this. The New York Rangers have Igor Shosturkin and you don't. Right? Like, that's all it comes down to. When you have a hot goalie like he is, especially how he's played this entire season, especially how he's played against the Pittsburgh Penguins specifically with that 3-1 and record, all three of those wins coming at the second half of the season. Well, and you mentioned, and that one win that Pittsburgh got this year, they just got one goal. It was a one nothing win for Pittsburgh. So I think when you look at that in the, in the terms of a seven-game series, this bodes very well for the Rangers. That's right. Looking forward to that. Can't wait. The NHL playoffs kick off this week. But we don't know the schedule yet. they gotta get, they got to get on some NBA stuff right now because we should know, you know? what time the games they are by now, guessing. people. They keep us on our toes. But, you know, Monday, Tuesday, we'll get some, some of that postseason right. hockey. And don't forget, every first-round game will be right here on MSG, pre-game, post-game, all that. You know what to do. To kick it right here on the world's greatest network. But we do got some football to talk about. And like I yeah. said, my partner, Madeline Burke, fresh from Vegas, covering the NFL draft. You got to meet some new Giants out there, I heard. Oh, absolutely. I think that Joe Shane, in his first draft as a general manager, did a great job uh, picking number five and number seven. At number five, they got Kayvon Thibodeau. At seven, they got Evan Neal. A couple of big fellas right here. They crushed this draft. And then also early on in the second round, Joe Shane traded back not once but twice. Mm -hmm. Got wide receiver Wandale Robinson uh, and got a couple more draft picks as well. So this is looking good. But after the first round, Joe Shane and Brian Dable talked to the media. Brian Dable talked about these two picks. Here's what he had to say. Well, they both have good size, good length. Um, Kayvon is quick off the ball. I think he has a, a wide variety of pass rush moves, but he can also set an edge for us on our defense. And, you know, it's no secret we play multiple schemes with Wink as our defensive coordinator. And, and we envision Kayvon being able to do a lot of different things for us. Um, he's going to have to come in here and earn it. Uh, but a productive player the time he's been at Oregon. And, and Evan, you know, he's played multiple positions. He's long. Uh, it, it takes, you know, a guy to go the long route to get to the quarterback. He's got long arms. He's big, massive man. Um, again, played multiple positions, have a lot of uh, people down in Alabama that I trust that, ha that had a lot of confidence in him and had a lot of good things to say about him. And then along with Bobby Johnson and, and Tony uh, Sperano, the guys that have looked at him, uh, we thought very highly of him. Joe Shane's new at the job, but one thing he did accomplish, no more only one Tibbs in New York. We got two Tibbs now. Two so Tibbs town. It's that's a two, a two Tibbs, Tibbs town. town, thanks to Joe Shane and those New York Giants. But that wasn't the only news that the Giants made this past week with the NFL draft. Uh, they had the option for Daniel Jones to pick up, and they chose not to, which is kind of making it a prove-it year for Daniel Jones. Uh, obviously, if he wants to be the franchise player of the New York Giants, he's going to have to show and prove this year because waiting in the wings in next year's draft is going to be a lot 
lot more deeper of a quarterback class coming out of the NFL, uh, coming out of college. Yeah, and this is really financial, right? I mean, you look at the way the Giants are set up right now. They're kind of up against the cap, and they are for some time to come. So Joe Shane has had to get very creative with it. They did pick up Dexter Lawrence's fifth-year option. They didn't pick up Daniel Jones. But you look at Daniel Jones, you know, he's been injured. He's been in and out of the starting lineup. And I think that this is more of like, okay, we're not going to guarantee that we're going to pick up that option and pay you that salary. We're going to give you the opportunity to play this year. Show us what you got. Uh, they could franchise tag him next year. They could give him a new deal. There, There's so many other options. This doesn't necessarily signal the end for the Daniel Jones era, but this signals this is a financial move. This is what they're doing to try to say, okay, this is smart bookkeeping right, right. and also smart team building because – you know, you can't be committing a lot of money to the future if you don't really know what you've got. So right. that's what it is right there. It but makes me worried, though, because you see the, the, what, what's out there. You see the Baker Mayfields. You see the Ryan Tannehills. You see where the bar is, where there were quarterbacks that were okay, that were decent, and were still kind of told, you know, hit the bricks. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, the Giants aren't the only team in town. There it is. Oh. New York Jets. Oh. Oh. Is, New York that, is Jets. that right? Is that right, Madeline? I mean, I got to say. That right? I got to say. I got to show <laughs> some respect over here because the Jets had themselves a solid draft so far, and mm. uh, I just want to check out this full page right Let's here. Let's look at this full page. Ahmad Gardner, number one cornerback in the draft. Sauce. Sauce the juice is, is temporary. in the building. Sauce is forever. Sauce is forever. The one and only Gucci Mane said it best. Garrett Wilson, one of the best wide receivers in the draft coming out of the Ohio State, and Luckily enough, the Jets have a Jermaine Johnson. They traded back into the first round to get this man right here. Incredible, savvy moves that uh, uh, Joe Douglas and Robert Sala have been pulling off this entire NFL draft. They've been dapping each other a lot backstage, and we got some sound of that as well. Check out what Robert Sala had to say about the Jets' first round last night. Oh, man. Um, when you get three in the top eight, you're not expecting it. Um, like Joe said, you know, you you were fortunate we're in a position to take our best available players as, as they come off ranked, and so Sauce was a very easy decision. Um, uh, then getting to 10 with Garrett Wilson, it was a very easy decision, and when we got to 15, and it was like, well, shoot, our, our top guy is still there, and uh, Joe working the phone and being able to get him. Um, you get you get three impact players at three premium positions. You. You dream of it happening, but uh, you know it's it was it was a really good day, really good good opportunity for these guys to come in and, and, and help this team get better. Well, and of course the Jets also traded up today in the second round with the Giants to get running back Brees Hall, best mm. running back in the draft mm. too. They are making some moves mm. and they're shaking it up over here in this draft. Madeline, you know one of the hardest things about watching the NFL draft is when your team comes up and it says team needs and it just says all. all <laughs> it's of like all offensive line, wide receivers, defensive football line, football players, all, team needs. We football need football players. players, and it's the rare draft where the team actually accomplished that. They got better in every single place that they absolutely needed to get better. And it's Obviously, still not even over yet. And it ain't over yet. They got the didn't... number one wide receiver, number one running back, number one cornerback, an incredible pass rush. The Jets will be fun to watch this year. And that's all you can hope for as a New York Jets fan. The tank commander takes away his tank. No more taking no more over tank. here on the MSG PM. Hopefully the Jets can take this roster and the Giants can take this roster into the playoffs, but that's a while from now. Hey, right hey. now we got NBA playoffs. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about NBA playoffs now. NBA NFL playoffs. playoffs, we got a lot more to get into. Um, we got some guys moving on into the second round. Uh, the Philadelphia 76. Well, I'm sorry, the Phoenix Suns defeated the New Orleans Hornets 4-2. Oh my gosh, I call them Hornets. Right it's Chris Paul's fault. I still call them the Hornets because of them. Yeah. New Orleans Pelicans fell 4 2 to the Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul had uh, the equivalent of the perfect game in baseball 14 for 14. He was perfect from the field, perfect from three, perfect from the charity stripe. That's perfection right there. Incredible game for a guy who has been six foot his entire career, <laughs> never been bigger than anybody. But this was really what stole the show right here. Willie Green, who was a teammate of Chris Paul's, who was an assistant coach for the Phoenix Suns last year when it went to the finals and just seeing what the Hornets went through starting 1-13 in the beginning of the year and battling all nice. the way back yeah. into pushing the top seed in the Western Conference to the brink in the NBA playoffs. You got to take your hat off to Willie Green. Incredible, incredible run yeah. for the Pelicans. Yeah, and that's a really great relationship too. They've got, you know, Willie and Chris played together yep. under Monty Williams in New Orleans. I got a chance to work with both of them with the Clippers 
they are, you know, have a really special bond, and I know that that's kind of continuing. Word. I mean, not being able to talk to each other throughout that series Word. was a was a challenge, <laughs> I know, for Chris. And so um, it's kind of nice to see the human side of these guys, right? We think of these guys as athletes and coaches and stat sheets, but these guys are people with goals and dreams and all that good yeah. stuff, too. And, hey, GMs, hire young black coaches. They seem to be doing very well this very year. Well. Uh, very well. On the other side of the coast, we got the Philadelphia 76ers who finally defeated the Toronto Raptors and are moving on. But not all the news is good for Philadelphia because breaking news right before we got on the air, it turns out Joel Embiid is out for game one with an orbital fracture and a mild concussion for the MVP candidate going up against his old teammate Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. That is not good. Good news for the Philadelphia 76ers. That's not good news at all, especially because he's definitely out game one. Questionable for the series. We're not sure how much this is going to be. If he is, when he is back playing, we're likely going to see masked Embiid, right? Yeah, uh, but this looking is forward also, to that, though. That, that'll, be, that'll be a whole new level. But this is also a Philly team that was up 3 nothing and had to go six games to close it out. So um, they're coming off of that, and with that kind of energy and that kind of struggle and that kind of effort that they had to put in then going into a new series without your star, without your MVP candidate, oh. Joel Embiid, that's going to be an uphill battle going against the number one seed in the East that nobody is giving the Heat credit. They are the one seed. They deserve it.